2024. Um, we'll first ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was a great Pledge of Allegiance of all of it's normally not that loud. Um, Let's we'll start with the roll call, Mr. Lauer. Um, Ms. Shanefeld will not be here tonight. Mr. Kozer? Here. Mr. Proska? Here. Mr. Steigel? Here. Mr. Rouse? Here. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Curry will not be here tonight. Right, we'll start with uh, special reports with recognition of Peters Township High School dance team. Um, if, if you uh, would like, uh, Mr. Proska, uh, there's a copy of a proclamation that's prepared uh, perhaps be appropriate to read. I will right, we'll do that. So, just kind of a little thing here. This year's uh, team we're going to honor for the 2024 UDA National Dance Team Championship Small Varsity Hip Hop Champions. <clears throat> After I read the proclamation, then I'll go over the names of the uh, the dancers here. So, Peter Township Proclamation: a Proclamation of Peter Township recognizing. The 2023 Peter Township High School dance team for their efforts in winning the 2024 UDA National Dance Championship in the category of small varsity hip hop. Whereas it is with immense pride and joy that Peter Township Council recognize the outstanding achievements of the Peter Township High School dance team, and whereas Peter Township High School dance team recently demonstrated unparalleled talent, dedication, and teamwork by clinching victory in the 2024 UDA National Dance Team Championships in the small varsity hip hop category. And whereas amidst fierce competition from 42 formidable teams in the hip hop division, the Peter Township High School Dance Team exhibited remarkable skill, precision, and creativity showcasing the pinnacle of excellence in the art of dance. And whereas this remarkable accomplishment marks the third consecutive year in which Peters Township High School dance team has emerged victorious, exemplifying an unwavering commitment to excellence, perseverance, and determination. And whereas the dedication, hard work, and talent demonstrated by each member of the Peters Township High School dance team, as well as the guidance and support provided by their coaches and mentors, have brought great honor and pride not only to Peters Township High School, but also to the entire community of Peters Township. And now, therefore, but it be pro proclaimed by Peter Township Camp Council that on this day, Monday, April 8, 2024, we extend our heartfelt congratulations and deep admiration to the Peter Township High School dance team for their outstanding achievement in winning the 2024 UDA National Dance Team Championship in the small varsity hip hop category. We commend each member of the team for their exceptional talent, dedication, and sportsmanship. And we express our profound gratitude to their coaches and mentors for their unwavering support and guidance. Approved in testimony whereof the underside representatives of Peters Township parent to set our hand and cause the seal of Peters Township to be affixed April 8, 2024. Congratulations, girls. And I'll go over the uh, team members. If you could each just raise your hand when I announce your name. So, and I probably oh yeah, come down front here. Um, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name. Maria and Tony, captain, senior, third third time champion. Kaylee Morgan, captain, senior, three times champion. Anna Radner, captain, three, senior, three time champion. Gabby Engelsberg, senior, three time champion. Courtney Schilling, senior, two time champion. Emma Bell, Jr., three times champion. 
Eva Sobroni, junior, three-time champion. <laughs> Ashlyn Morgan, junior, two-time champion. <laughs> Sammy Parrish, junior, two-time champion. <laughs> Maddie Zorowski, junior, three-time champion. Sammy Baumgarten, sophomore, two-time champion. <laughs> Helena Darby, sophomore, two-time champion. <laughs> Reagan Joyce, freshman, first-time champion. <laughs> and always appreciate the head coach, Dominique Schuster. We are extremely, extremely proud of these young ladies. They have represented the township very, very well. This is actually our 20th year and our fifth national champion championship. So thank you so much for recognizing us. We, we appreciate it. to the public hearing. Um, the purpose of this evening's public hearing is to accept comments on a proposed change to the township zoning map. This public hearing was advertised in the Observer Reporter and uh, as well on Peters Township website. The property was posted. Notifications were sent out to all property owners within 600 feet of their proposed development. There will be a brief presentation by township staff. This will be followed by questions from council as well as comments from the audience. Council may take action on this proposed change tonight or possibly at another date. Mr. Lauer. Um, in the way of uh, background information, uh, Dr. Zolkowski owns a series of pro properties which abut East McMurray Road on either side of the Peters Township Fire Department Station 1. Uh, what you see there, there are two primary parcels. Then in addition, there are five single family lots which are uh, front on uh, East McMurray Road. Um, these parcels are currently located in a mixed residential overlay district. Permitted uses in that zoning district include single family detached homes, single family attached homes, and multifamily structures. And in addition, by special exception, group living uh, facilities type B are permitted. There is, in fact, a um, proposal um, for uh, a, a group living facility that has been uh, it currently being developed uh, for this property. Um, over the past couple of years, the township staff has been involved in discussions with the owners and developers of the two projects. The, the project that is moving forward is the assisting living and memory care facility to be developed by Smith Packett a firm from Roanoke, West Virginia that specializes in development of these types of facilities. Smith Packet has received approval for their special accepted application um, by the township's zoning hearing board. They've submitted a plan to subdivide the property um, and um, the, uh, the this drawing uh, is a representation of what they intend to do in terms of, of the um, assisted living facility. What's proposed for the adjacent uh, properties is a series of townhouses. This is the latest rendering that, that uh, we have received. In our discussion with the developers and the property owners, the township staff has insisted that if the properties to be developed for townhouses, connections must be made to East McMurray Road. Uh, to accommodate the ingress and egress from the plan. Under the recent plan, the traffic from approximately 90 homes will enter either from or exit onto Marion Drive and Pleasant Avenue. In planning for the subdivision of the property, the township has been informed that the five residential lots located on East McMurray Road will not be consolidated 
into the two primary parcels. Given that these lots can be sold off individually and there, thereby block access to East McMurray Road, developing this portion of the property with townhouses no longer makes sense. And therefore, a portion of the parcel should be removed from the mixed residential overlay district and be developed as low density residential. It's consistent with the surrounding neighborhoods, um, including the five lots owned by Mr. Zolkowski. So what is proposed is that on, on the existing parcels that this area, which is now uh, mixed residential, that the overlay be removed and it be returned to simply low density um, uh, zoning. Um, at the regular meeting on March 14th, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended that this parcel be rezoned by removing it from the mixed uh, overlay district. I don't know if the council has any questions of Mr. Holder or myself. I don't. I don't have any questions at this time. Audience comments? Yeah, I have, some, I have a question too. Um, Excuse me. Yeah. We're going to um, go ahead. Uh, I think you're going to tell them to come in, but if the court reporter wants to swear in anyone who wants to give testimony for this public hearing. I can't, I can't see signs now that all these people are sitting here, so I don't know who you are <laughs> designated. Sorry. Okay. Okay, okay. Solicitor, if you, um, Ms. Court Reporter, if you would swear anybody in that wants to provide testimony, we can do it collectively. If someone changes their mind and wants to add testimony after you hear something, just remind the court reporter to swear you in. So. So then we'll, we'll let this gentleman start, excuse me, and then we'll start from council's left side of the room, work our way over to the right, try and be a little bit organized with how we do it. And before you speak, sir, we have the court reporters swear everybody in that wants to testify. So, no, collect, collect, collect. Collectively, anybody who would like to give testimony should raise their hand. Mr. Levine, you don't have to swear in as council. It's up to you. Okay. I have Please raise your hand. You solemnly swear that the testimony which you're about to give in the matter now pending is approved. All three nothing Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name's uh, Thomas Murphy. I live at 111 Field Brook Drive. Um, could, you, could you sign in and put your address? Okay. I'm okay. sorry. Fieldbrook. Fieldbrook. Low density, single family residential only, half acre, period. Correct. Is that what that means? Correct. Because in there it talks about semi private, institutionalized in the wording on the letter that we got. So it's strictly homes, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, next is ingress, egress. On this it only shows one ingress, egress on Marion. You have to open up the other one. Okay, I know you're not in a planning where you don't have a site development yet, showing the houses, but as of right now, this looks like this is the only access to this point. This has to be opened up. And the reason I say that is when you come off Fieldbrook Drive and you make a left on McMurray down by the high school and you try and make a left-hand turn, from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock, you take your life in your own hands trying to make a left-hand turn. And if, you, and if you put more cars going that way only instead of going up 19 it's going to be more accidents i've seen quite a few i've been here about 40 years i've seen a lot of accidents people come around and turn by the middle school pretty quick and you don't have a good line sight and when you make the left you're going to get hit and the other issue is um stormwater management like everybody knew last week you know everybody got flooded that whoever does the stormwater management makes sure it goes down toward McMurray Road and not toward Marion Drive. So those are my comments for council. Thank okay. you. Any questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Andrew Zahalski. I'm the property owner. Uh, it's Z-A-H-A-L-S-K-Y. Uh, so I'd like to point out there's a couple of inaccuracies in Mr. Lauer's presentation. Uh, the most notable one being that the diagram that he showed is not the most recent proposal that was presented for uh, the township. In fact, uh, a plan representing uh, this diagram was submitted this morning. We'll make it 
This plan was, submit, was submitted this morning. Oh, wow. Um, and again, we're, we're, where, where was that submitted? It was submitted to uh, Paul Holdren, uh, uh, the Township Planning Office. This, uh, it's me, Mark Holdren. I'm sorry, Mark, Mark Holdren. Sorry, you're Paul. Uh, it, was, it was submitted at the Planning Office this morning by Kim Ga uh, my engineer, J.R. Gale's associate, Kim Gale. Dropped it off. My wife came by and uh, paid the application I'm sorry. fee. There's oh. Oh. chattering and okay. talking like that. I'm long. sorry. Uh, it, it was submitted this morning. Uh, Kim Gales from J.R. Gales Associates, the engineer, came and dropped the plans off this morning, and my wife came uh, subsequently and paid uh, both the application fee and the escrow fee. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the plan which triggered uh, this desire to do the rezoning uh, was one potential concept shown by one developer I was working with, and at the point where the township made it clear that they were unhappy with the lack of the connection to East McMurray Road. We have always uh, emphasized that we were willing to work with the township. Uh, there has been uh, some issue regarding once we make that connection, who would pay for the uh, traffic light uh, because the price of the traffic light exceeds the value of the traffic impact fees. So there's been some discussion regarding uh, the payment for the traffic light that would need to go at that intersection with East McMurray Road. But we have always uh, desired to work with the township. And instead, when one concept plan was presented, uh, this zoning was done very hastily and done specifically to target my property. Uh, because it was done hastily, it, it also encroaches on the dimensions of the nursing home plan, which the township has actually gotten behind. Uh, and my recommendation is that uh, you allow me to continue to work with the township to come up with a plan with uh, multiple uh, road, routes of ingress and egress that will achieve the traffic improvements that the township wants uh, and, and to not hastily pass a rezoning that basically takes all discussion off the table when I have been trying to work with the township since 2019 to come up with plans for both sides of the property that would be for the benefit of the township. I, I, I think this was uh, hastily done to target me and is interfering with both the nursing home and not achieving uh, the goals, which was to have better, better connectivity, which I'm perfectly willing to work with the township if you just give me time to work with them instead of passing an ordinance that's going to basically take all discussion off the table. So I do think that it's unfortunate that you feel that you were targeted because I can assure you you have not been. So what I would like you to point out, is, and if we can make that picture any larger, if possible, uh, so, Paul, so, and, then, so, and, then, and then, can I finish I'm this? Sorry, no. um, and then whenever we can see that, would you mind pointing out the differences since this was only just submitted this morning? That's ridiculous. Um, this is ridiculous. Okay, we're not going to have the whole audience talking now, okay? okay. One person so, at a time. So please. on this plan, we have a connection to Marion Drive. We have the, uh, the former gen gentleman, did you want to mention? The side, sir. We, we are opening up uh, the Pleasant. Pleasant and Crest Avenue intersection. We are also connecting to the cul-de-sac that's generated by the nursing home. So we have an egress to East McMurray Road away from the school. And last but not least, we are showing a connection down to make a four-way intersection with the uh, with the driveway to the school, which was the township's uh, main concern, was that they wanted this intersection here and they wanted this intersection signalized. Uh, in, with regard to your comment that I was not targeted, that's not true because, again, as this, the, the, the mixed residential overlay includes several properties, including this property next to me, the firehouse property, two additional properties there. If you look at the drawing that uh, the township has submitted, it is entirely contained in my property and my property alone. The, the, this ordinance is specifically targeting my property because of that, um, that former proposal. In addition, this ordinance was submitted to uh, the agenda for the last meeting to make the public hearing, 
24 hours after that former proposal was presented. It was basically done very hastily and done specifically because of that former proposal, which is no longer a working proposal, and specifically done to target my property because, again, they were upset that that proposal did not show this connection, which we are now willing to make. What, what is shown here is, again, uh, those, you know, the township was concerned that we, we did establish that there are five additional properties uh, currently zoned on what was called the George subdivision of 1959. And so basically we're doing this as like a, a phase one and phase two uh, where we're, we're you know, coming to here and then you know, leaving this, but we are, we are eventually planning to make that connection uh, to accommodate the township's needs because I have always desired to work with the township. Again, it was one concept plan was presented and suddenly now I, you know, I'm faced with a huge public hearing where instead of what could have just been you know, working with us. And, and then the other issue, again, is the way they drew that line coming here to Agnell, they're, they're hitting a piece of the nursing home property uh, the nursing home desired property. So basically because they drew the line hastily and didn't check with us, they're now going to completely screw up the nursing home plan as well because, you know, again, it was done hastily and it's unnecessary because I'm willing to work with the township to have to come up with a good set of improvements. And it, again, was specifically done to target me. Dr. Zahalski, I'm trying to count and I can't because my eyes aren't as good as they were 20 years ago, but how many uh, it, townhouses, is it still the same 86? It, 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 I think it's, it's 88 or 89 right now, and about 20 of them would, are going to be in the second phase. So, so, the, so just so I understand, the first phase would only have access from Marion and Pleasant. No, no, the first phase would still have three accesses, Marion, Pleasant, and through the nursing home to East McMurray, away from the school. The township wants a school tra a traffic light in front of the school because apparently in the mornings when people are dropping kids off, the left-hand turns on the westbound lane of McMurray are, uh, you know, are very difficult at this point. So the township wants a traffic light there. Um, they wanted us to pay for the entirety of the traffic light, even though that price far exceeds the amount that 70, that, sorry, our 88 homes would pay in traffic impact fees. We offered a, a concession of paying for half of the traffic light. Um, township wasn't satisfied with that, which is why we came up, we were looking at other concepts to say, well, if the township doesn't want you know, to participate with us, what are our other options? So we presented another option Township, rather than saying, we don't like that option, don't go with it, said, we're going to rezone the property. But can okay. I correct something? But can I correct third. something, go please? Ahead. When we got in the, the drawing that we have um, here, we called up the civil engineer who drew that and asked the question, why not, why not the connection onto East McMurray Road? And what he explained to us at the time was that's no longer possible because there are five lots along East McMurray Road. And we asked Dr. Zahalski whether the intention was to incorporate those into the plan, into the, uh, the other property and to consolidate them. And the answer was no. So as soon as you do that, you no longer necessarily have the ability to get a road down to, um, to East McMurray Road. Even with what he is saying right now, he's talking about, about that lower portion being phase two. You have no control over if it's phased in that direction, when that connection would be made. If in fact you were to do this, what the township staff, and, and not having talked to Mark about this, but I would assume what the township staff recommendation is that the first phase would be on to East McMurray Road so that you don't run all that traffic through the, the existing streets indefinitely. That street that comes down, you, know, you, don't, you don't need to applaud me. That's not how this works. The other thing about that is that connection that's going back to the, to the uh, nursing facility, when that came in, it was the township's recommendation that that street be a public road. 
the developer of that piece of property insisted that's not true. what just let me finish true. let me finish it is true that the township recommended it be a public street and when a special exception was granted the developer asked that it be developed the township specifications but it be retained as a private driveway or private road and the reason being is they didn't want to have to go back to PennDOT and look at what improvements would be required along East McMurray Road if in fact you were connecting all of these lots in just as there are improvements required at that intersection there would have been improvements required at the other intersection it isn't clear to me whether or not, and it's really a question somebody would have to research, is whether you can connect that street onto that private drive. I don't even know what the status of that is because that plan hasn't been submitted to us yet. So we don't know whether we're looking at a private driveway, a private street. I just know it isn't a public road. Okay. I do if have a you question. read the minutes of the zoning hearing board, it was not the developer of the nursing home that requested that road to be private. They went in requesting it to be public. It was the zoning hearing board that turned it private because they didn't want to have to pay for maintenance of the road until the road was fully connected. But the minutes state in at least three locations that the ultimate plan is to have a connection. Furthermore, on the most recent copy of the nursing home plan that you have received, the subdivision plan, an easement is clearly shown to make that connection. So Mr. Lauer's contention that that road is not going to be built to public, to public standards, which it will be, and that the uh, ultimate connection to my property is not planned, is inaccurate. No, that's, that'd be incorrect. It, I never said that it wasn't going to be built to public standards. It's required to be in a 40-foot right-of-way, and it's re, be, the cartway is required to be to township standards. There's nothing in there that requires uh, the township to take that over. It, it exists as a private drive to start with. So I have a question for Mr. Holdren. Uh, referencing Exhibit A, the new uh, depiction that we're all viewing now, have you ever seen this submitted to? I have not. We received a box of plans that no one opened today because we just don't, you know, with the planning commission come up, coming up, it's not going to go to this particular planning commission meeting. It's going to go to the one in May. So we typically don't open them up until a month prior. Very good. Thank you. Anything else, Dr. Solis? Uh, no, I, I said my piece. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Let me let me say say one more thing. Again, I showed us two. One of the concerns is Mr. Lauer just said, "Oh, he showed us two phases. That road is not required." I'm willing to work with that. Again, my contention is let me work with the planning department. Don't pass the ordinance. If, if he's telling me now I can't even do it as two separate phases, my, my goal it was, again, to block it out because since the subdivision existed, I was trying to block it out since I apparently had the right to do so in order to come to some further agreement with them about the eventual payment of the traffic light. Uh, but again, I'm willing to work with them. I, I'm basically trying to avail myself of my legal rights in order to have a, a way to negotiate with them and avail myself. But I have no objection to eventually making that connection. I just need time to work with the township. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, May Police Council, my name is Clifford Levine from the law firm Denton's Conan Grigsby. Um, can you hear me? Uh, it's Clifford Levine, Dentons, Conan Grigsby, and, and I represent um, Dr. Zahalski, and was just retained. And we had sent a letter to uh, Mr. Smith on Friday, which apparently did not get fully distributed. Um, we, we were just retained, but here's we're, we're hopeful that we could at least postpone this by. Uh, 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 some period so that we can have a discussion and maybe even to go to the next meeting. But just so that, to, to, as I understand it, and again, I'm, I'm getting involved here, but we've, we've spoken, I'm getting involved here uh, just this past week. But there were, there have been years of discussions. So it's not as if there was a plan that was just dropped today. There were years of discussion to talk about developing the plan, making the connection to the nursing home, and having the connection go to East McMurray. So that was discussed. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Lauer, 
wanted the full payment, wanted the developer to fully pay for the traffic light and the improvements, which would have totaled approximately a million dollars. Is that right? I don't know what the value on the on the improvements were, but they certainly were in that vicinity. And what's what's required at that location, according to PennDOT, is a traffic signal with turning lights. Right. So we have but, this, but the township was prepared to apply its traffic impact fees that it re would receive from this development to that to that improvement. And what were those traffic impact fees? They are a couple hundred thousand dollars times the number. Of years. So yeah. less than two hundred thousand dollars. So as I understand the. What is an interesting issue, frankly, um, there's a very congested area right now on McMurray. There's a concern about having a traffic light. We've heard residents talk about the concern about the existing condition. The um, developer comes in and proposes uh, a, a new development, and that translates to, you know, a hundred some. Um, trips, they, they, you measure this, it's quantified, and that, and under ordinance, there's a price, I think $1,700 or so per trip, and that is what a developer under law is required to pay. So that, in this case, that came out to under $200,000. Now, if the improvements are a million dollars, then there's an interesting question. Can you compel the developer to pay for the million dollars when your own law and state law says that there's an impact fee that has to be set, quantified, and, and very clearly set out in writing. So the, the problem where we maybe kind of split off a little bit and had a little bit of a miscommunication was that when the law that the state sets that Peters Township has adopted with this impact fee provides for a developer with this exact type of development to make a connection and then contribute the impact fees that would be approximately $200,000. When the developer's told, no, you've got to build, you've got to pay the million dollars, but we'll forgive you the $200,000. So in other words, we'll make you pay the $800,000. Then that's the, that, that then led to other, well, maybe we can do this in two phases. Maybe we can do this. And the developer here was willing to split and pay way more than even the, what is mandated under the law. And so that's why we ended up with the, well, maybe we, because of the five, five existing subdivisions, maybe we, we don't necessarily have to go to McMurray, maybe there's another option. But the primary goal here, I think, of everybody would be to have the light, to have the connection to McMurray, and to do that, but do it in a way that's consistent with the law. And so the, the question is, um, if, 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 if uh, the council ends up voting to, ch to change these two properties, there's been an identification of these two properties in the context of the township also suggesting that you have to pay for the full cost of the, of the light. And in our view, and this is what our letter said, there is a, uh, a lot of case law that it suggests that that's spot zoning. That's property that is not taken because there's been a change in any type of planning or comprehensive analysis or planners that were hired uh, in the last two weeks that said, hey, we have a different way of thinking. This is really relating to the cost of this traffic light. And so those properties are being singled out. The procedure then, were this council to vote for the rezoning, would be that we would have to take uh, an appeal to the zoning hearing board. We'd have to allege the spot zoning, which is predicated on a substantive due process violation. There's a whole bunch of case law on that. We're not really interested in doing that. That doesn't help you, doesn't help the developer, and it just prolongs us. We would like to have really serious discussions with your solicitor, with council, and try to work out a plan that serves the public by connecting to McMurray, having a traffic light, but doing it in a way that's consistent with state law and Peter's own law in terms of its, its uh, quantification of the impact fee. So we do just ask that you defer. Um, I've introduced myself to Mr. Smith. I'm happy to work with him. We want to do it constructively. Engaging in three years of litigation serves no purpose, doesn't help anybody, and so we're hoping that for a little short time we can perhaps have some discussions and reach a resolution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, I'm here as an almost 40 year resident of this township, hoping that you will see fit to change the zoning in that area. 
I come to you with three areas that I'd like to speak on. Number one is continuity, two is safety, and three is common sense. When I think about continuity, maybe I'm using the wrong word, but if you think from Route 19 to East McMurray Road, whether you go up McNary or Pleasant, and if you think of that corridor clear to Center Church Road, what do you have? Traffic. Single family, yeah, traffic. <laughs> Single family half acre lots. So the continuity of how this was planned from the very beginning in this township by changing the ordinance makes it a, to fit in which what, with what has been there, number one. Number two, when I talk about the safety, in the almost 40 years I lived there, there are as many or more young children under the age of 10 living in my area. So if we let 80 some townhouses come in, we are going to be adding at least 180 to 200 cars in those little roads with only those two accesses, all the traffic going through there and what people don't understand that don't live there, we have more through traffic missing the crossroads coming up Fieldbrook to Marion to Crest and down Pleasant than you, you would believe. So automatically we are creating a safety risk for our residents and our children by increasing the traffic flow. Because he can have as many openings as he wants, they're still coming through there. And that's a fact. And anybody who lives in that area knows we have enough, and I'm one of the old farts, that walk that mile loop. You add the traffic, you're putting some of the old people at risk as well as the, the young people. The traffic is unbelievable. It's already been mentioned. I don't want to go any farther. The common sense is, you have residents who have lived here for how long? You have a community that has been developed in half acre lots for the community, not for an outside developer, who I always have trouble with, eventually I'll get this done. We've seen how that's worked in the past with many things. So I would ask you, to rezone for safety and common sense. Thank you. Here I go again. You know, I don't know how many of these people were at the comprehensive planning meeting back in 2013. You all know that I show up at council meetings, okay? I don't know how many of these people show up. We're a home world community. If they have concerns about this township maintaining half acre lots, they could put something on the ballot. Okay, instead of us each time coming in here and talking about maintaining this country look and this half acre lot situation. You know, why do we pay people to come in here and consult us on a comprehensive plan? Why do we do that? We pay these people to come in here. They tell us we have to start putting in multifamily dwellings and we have to quit this. We have certain, they tell us the donkey form, you know, off of Waterdam. They told us we better develop that. That'd be a nice place to put something, okay? But no, everybody, when it's in their backyard, then they come into this room, okay? They come into this room, and then they want to say, keep the half acre lots, keep the pretty country look. Well, this is called development, because those consultants back in 2013 told us 
that if we did not start bringing in multifamily dwellings, and I think, I don't know if you were on council then, you might not have been. No, but you know, were you? Okay. I think so, Gary would have been the only one who was. Yeah, and I don't know where the rest of them are here, if they're on vacation or what. But, you know, really, whenever we were told that, they made it very clear that we were going to have a, now I know you're all going to laugh at this, a tax burden, okay? I go up to uh, school board people about four or five years ago. I said, how many new kids did we get in our school? One year they told me three. Another, the next year they told me 12. Okay? So you got to see the big picture here. Because we cannot keep developing with no people, young people being able to come in here. Because what happened one council meeting when I was here? A developer laughed at me. There are no affordable homes in Peters Township. People, young people with children can't afford to come in here. So you build a new school, you know, you're not going to have any kids to put in it. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh at that. Can we please keep the background noise a minimum so they're you know, working? So, what does a Halsky do? He buys the land. And this is what cracks me up about this township. This really cracks me up. Because people buy, pe people like people to invest in things, right? Because just like I said about the farmers, their land is their 401k. So, you know, and that doctor, what was his name from Monongahela? Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Repepe. Repepe. Yeah, comes in and says that we should uh, pay the farmers not to develop their land. Well, they had that land all their life, and to sell it is their right, okay? So Zerhalski invested his money in buying some land in Peters Township with the hope to develop it someday. And that was zoned as it was back in 2014. And now you all just want to change it because you start getting some pressure put on you. I mean, why? I just want to know. Do, have we had our comprehensive plan yet for this year? We have not started. All yet. right. Yeah. So you're supposed to let me know because There's I'm going to be. Let you know about because yeah, because I'm going to be there because you know this is ridiculous. We have these planning meetings and then everything gets changed. I'm a little sick of it, and I'm the, yeah, and I don't have the powerful voice here, okay, because I don't have any money, I don't have any kids in school, nothing like that, but I come to these meetings, I do get stop signs put up where a kid might get hit, okay, so just give me a break with this, I'm sick of this half acre lot stuff, we need some townhouses in this Township. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Excuse me. Everyone needs to be quiet. There's a court reporter trying to record the meeting. Thank you, Mission. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Don Hutchins. I live on Pleasant Avenue. Don Hutchins. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I have to really agree in, in, in the previous gentleman that spoke. I think it was understated the congestion and the safety issues that this may present. I think he said 180 to 200 uh, additional vehicles on these roads. That, that would be in the general area. Right now the traffic is very tough if you go down Philbrook, if you go down at the end of Pleasant, if you go down at the end of McNary, and I don't know if the township's going to be able to be able to handle that. It does potentially bring up a fire life safety issue as well as far as emergency vehicles. I park up on the top of our driveway. I live on Pleasant Avenue. I almost got hit head on by somebody coming up Pleasant about two years ago. Barely missed me. The person must have been going 50 to 60 miles an hour. I don't know how they were going that fast right by the stop sign, but they were. Uh, that's just a little bit of it. There are a lot of children at the um, at the bus stops. We want to be careful about that. There's also a death child on that road. I'm not sure if this is the best move. Now, I'm not saying that the township 
doesn't need multi um, housing of this type, this might not be the best place for it. Um, if the construction moves forward, where would the construction um, vehicle inlet be to the zoned area? Because if it's on these side streets, they're not built to withstand that type of traffic. So, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Anyone else on this side of the room over here? Um, I live on McNary Street, and um, so I'm twofold because we're getting the nursing home in my backyard, and plus we're getting this proposed housing. Um, do we, is there a number of houses, single family homes that they were looking at as opposed to the 80 townhomes? So there's not a development plan. This is okay. a zoning question. Okay. So. The simple answer is 1.2 homes per acre is what they can develop. And, and depending on the lot size, I, I think in the area that's being rezoned, we're talking 17 acres. So 17 acres times 1.2 would be the max if it were to be a single family home. Okay. Okay, again, my issue is, um, is the nursing have a done deal plans in place? And We haven't got a submittal yet, with, okay. but we've been in discussion with them, and I do believe they have a special exception that allows for this. They are per pursuing a subdivision of the property so that they can be begin um, making submittals for this. So I believe the plan as you see it, is what we expect eventually to receive in the next month or two. Okay, and because they were doing all these ground studies and everything, and that's included in all that, and yes. that was all. Yes. Okay. okay, and I guess my biggest concern is right now we can't even get out of McNary Street because there's so much traffic trying to get in McNary Street. Everybody blocks the intersection. I don't know if any of the um, traffic things accounting for John Eagle accounting for the senior family home, accounting for people cutting through water dam up to the senior home to get to offset Donald, you know, Donaldson's crossroads. They cut, they cut through meadow, again, to, you know, like they go through a brook, but they also cut through meadow to get away from. So we've got all traffic trying to get away from Donaldson. So I don't know how this traffic from the nursing home and the housing facility is gonna dump onto McMurray. It's just too much. So that's it. Yes, ma'am. Kay Wazalaski, I live, um, I actually own two homes on Marion Drive. Um, one is right at the crux of uh, Field Brook where it comes to meet Marion. Very high traffic area. My daughter and my granddaughters live there and it has become very unsafe for them to be anywhere off the grass. Um, traffic has increased. Anytime there's a game or anything at the now middle school, nobody wants to sit in that line. So the traffic going, as everyone has said previously, but if anyone's going north on 19, they will cut through to avoid Donaldson's Crossroads, just like everyone said. Um, I now live on the back side and the traffic is diminished, but I'm sure that will increase too. Um, as far as um, other concerns, I've lived in the township since 68. Um, obviously, I'm old, but um, <laughs> things grow. I understand that there's progress, but um, it just, the half acre lots I would um, approve. I, want, I think I want to quote from a February 26th PT Council meeting. I believe it was um, Mr. Kozer. And that says, uh, we have to put our foot down. This is an insult. Right. We're talking about 86 houses going to, into Pleasant Avenue on a Marion Drive. We have been over too much. I agree with that statement. I agree with um, the council, the the decision to change the zoning back to where it was. Yeah. 
Anything, anyone else in this grouping here? Move over to the middle section. Anyone want to? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll say stop. Stop. Yours. <laughs> I was trying to get you on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jackie Vine Weaser. M I N E W E A S E R. 316 Marion Drive. I live in the um, dead end part of Marion Drive. I'm the last house before the entrance into the uh, lot that is um, under question here. And the traffic that we've seen has, even just people, because they don't know it's a dead end, mm -hmm. it's amazing um, how many cars come down our street. We're, um, if you're aware of the street, it, it's a very steep hill on the one side, we're on the upper side, so everyone's turning around our driveway constantly. Um, we're really concerned about that. We're, we think the area, we've been there, how many years, Jerry? 33. 33 years. The traffic and the congestion in that area is um, has really increased since we moved there. And everybody knows, because all the people, we've had a lot of old neighbors here from the area that are quite aware of um, what's happening in there. And trying to get on to Marion, uh, down to onto McMurray is kind of challenging now, right now. Um, it's not about a traffic light to ease the congestion getting off and on there because it's still the number of cars that will be there if you put a parcel with 80 some homes. Two cars a person for those, Amazon, um, UPS, uh, all those different uh, vehicles that are coming back and forth. It's a big safety concern for us. It's not just the traffic light. We like to keep it a single family zoned area. That's why. I mean, we keep saying um, we're willing to work with the township, but we also are all taxpayers that have lived here our entire lives, love it here. We want to keep that kind of, um, that atmosphere that we're, we want to be around. We, we're not saying maybe there needs to be townhomes, but I don't think like a few people have said, this is the place to put it. It's not a good location with the congestion that's in that area right now. Um, so I would just like to um, commend some of the people that came here. I think it's very misleading to come and see this when that's not what was advertised to say that this is what we were going to talk about today. And then we come in here and someone's trying to change what the agenda is, I guess. And that's kind of discerning. So. Okay, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gene, Council President and, and Council, thank you very much for your service to the community. Appreciate it. Um, I came here with a few questions about the zoning thing, but within two minutes of hearing Mr. Zahowski, I love that zoning thing. I don't, need, I don't have any questions on it at all. I think you should proceed with it. That's what the meeting was called for. And I kind of don't even think we should be talking about that since it, it wasn't on the agenda. <laughs> anyway, getting to the lecture from our council activist, I've been here for 45 years. And I think this community has progressed better than any community south of Pittsburgh, maybe even the north too, because they don't even have the zoning laws that we have. But I, I was in real estate for 20 some years. I watched this township grow. When I came here, there was one pizza place, one, one car dealership, one bank. Now I have, my, I have my choice of a whole bunch of those, okay? And I've seen our schools grow from little schools to what they are today. It isn't because we don't have children, it's because we had too many. And we just built a huge, beautiful school to our, to our credit. And that school will probably be filled. We've gone from single A when I came here in Whitfield, we're now six A. So that means growth. That means a lot of people. It means a lot of kids. So what I would say to you is continue this meeting as though it was, as it was called. Keep the agenda that you came here for and vote on this zoning proposal tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any 
other comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Um, well, where can you go? RICH? I live at 313 Pleasant Avenue. Uh, I have a, a brief uh, statement. I'm not an attorney, so I'm not going to talk that long. But just to say that when, when we purchased our home, we were attracted to the single family neighborhood with half acre lots. We are concerned that adding townhouses with no other means of access will fundamentally change the nature of our neighborhood, increasing traffic and noise. In fact, allowing townhouses to be built would easily double the number of homes in our neighborhood. In summary, we respectfully request that the property should be rezoned to single family half acre lots as this would be consistent with the homes in the rest of the neighborhood. And thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Jim McLaughlin. I live at 334 Pleasant Avenue. I'd like to cover all this. I thought we were coming for the zoning, but this all sort of got dropped into the mix, and I'm prepared. I moved here nine years ago. I feel targeted. I've got seven letters in the mail about the development behind my house. I live here. So I've come here four or five times to talk about my concerns with any development there. It wasn't developed in 1959 for a reason. One of the reasons is it's a swamp. It has eight springs running through it. There's a valley right here. There's a hill, there's a cliff, there's a drainage ditch. My yard's flooding because of the work they did to Pleasant Avenue. I had to put a French drain in front of my house. Now you guys want to build down the hill. Water runs downhill. It's going to come down here and flood McMurray Road. This is dense woods. So we want to take trees, dirt, rocks, earth, heavy equipment, diesel, powered equipment, Bring it into a neighborhood that's 60 years old. Disturb it. I originally was thinking 18 to 24 months. This is five years worth of work. I lived in Moon Township in the 70s. My dad was a developer. We knew what we were getting into. We moved in the first lot. We knew there was going to be building going on. It's a 60 year old neighborhood. And my concerns were the same from when I was here before. I, the old folks' home is what I'm going to call it, across the street from the old folks' home, across the bridge from the old folks' home, down the street from the old folks' home. I can't believe that that's back on the table, okay? Because here's why. There's no environmental plan, no stormwater management plan, no sediment plan. Property has multiple springs run into drainage ditches. Floods any time it rains heavily. It was flooded Pleasant Avenue's flood. No traffic study for the construction phase. All that heavy equipment. All taking all those trees, all that rock, all that dirt, all out of there. The other big concern is about safety. When they're taking all this woods out, and they're taking this whole cliff and hillside down, and all this stuff has to come out and go on McMurray Road, how are these guys getting out? Their ambulances, fire trucks getting out. There's seven alarms a day. Murphy's Law is going to say, or common sense, I like the guy was talking about common, common sense is gonna say, when they try to come out of there, there's gonna be a guy flagging there with a big truck full of dirt and rocks. And they can't get where they need to go. It's a two lane road that isn't gonna support the construction phase, let alone when people are actually living there. Any PennDOT communications have gone on yet. Washington County communications gone on yet. Ingress and egress, they're acting like we can just drop these roads in. How's everybody gonna get in and out of there? Helicopters? They can't, you know, it's, it's already overcrowded. It's already overpopulated. Now they wanna drop all this in. You know, everybody's safety, with that fire department being there, should be a major consideration. Just because some rich guy sold some other rich guy some swamp land, doesn't mean that all Peters Township safety needs to be jeopardized and my peaceful existence. I moved here for peace and quiet. Don't send me letters, I'll keep coming. 
<laughs> Thank you. This was the original proposal. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. I'm sorry, could you speak? Charles I live on Crest. I'm at the corner of Crest and Pleasant. The people, I don't know if anybody's seen This was the original layout of the nursing home. From what's up there, what this fellow proposed now, and he's going to take a road and put it through, which is designated wetlands. To me, it's, that's against any FDA law or, you know, for developments. Can't go. And he wants to put traffic through a nursing home property, which is terrible to begin with. Like I said, everybody here said when he moved into this neighborhood, they moved here because they wanted half-acre lots. They wanted space between them so they don't have to look in the neighbor's bedroom. Traffic actually has alleviated a little bit since they moved to high school. We used to get high school traffic endlessly, endlessly at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. As this fellow stated earlier, now we're going to get construction traffic endlessly, endlessly on roads that weren't developed to take that kind of traffic. Heavy loads, construction equipment. It doesn't work. If you want high density development, go to Norster Bank. Go down to the meadows and see what's going on. Go buy sheets. Go cross water dam. Go, go across the lake now and see what's going on over there. It's just, it's crazy. I know they're going to develop for probably, there's going to be a lot of high density living in there. We don't need it in this tight knit, closed in, almost a cul-de-sac neighborhood. If it wasn't for the access to 19 on Pleasant, that's all this area would be. It's a closed loop neighborhood. One way in, one way out. We don't need this kind of development. Initially, when this property was sold by the Bernettis eight, ten years ago, the initial plans were single-family development. Now, all of a sudden, it's multi-family development. What changed? What changed over the years? Go back to what it originally was. Any other comments from the audience? Seeing no other comments. Okay, yes. My name is Rachel Kuha, K E C H A R, on the um, 228 McNary Street. Um, I guess I don't have a whole lot of, uh, I guess, brilliant legal things to say, but I do want to point out that uh, that area, we had another slide that was actually an aerial view. Sorry. Could you speak up? Um, this, this area, we did have a, a slide up here before that showed the, the, um, the you know, green, the street view. And I'm sorry, you know, the aerial view of everything. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it's, it is single family homes. And I remember years ago, um, I originally grew up on East McMurray Road down by the, uh, the old middle school. Um, and they wanted to develop a house uh, to make it a private school. I believe it was the Goddard School. I could be wrong on that. Um, they wanted to, do, to rezone that property, and the council at that time decided that they were very hesitant to change the single family zoning because the neighborhood was, the houses on either side, everywhere were single family homes. And I really appreciated that they were. Um, looking out for the residents that were living there and I guess I would just like to ask the council to consider the people that are living in these neighborhoods now that have purchased these houses have been here for a long time um, and you know so that's point number one uh, so I guess continuity again but also um, another thing that I don't think has been mentioned is Children walk up and down East McMurray Road in front of this now middle school that used to be the high school all the time, uh, getting to and from school. Perhaps they're going to after school activities. That's not going to be fixed by red light if you add extra cars coming through there. Um, 
it's just an additional safety concern with these kids trying to get to and from where they're going to. I'm not sure what they're doing yes. at that school, but there are <coughs> children walking up and down those roads a lot, especially when there is a game. You see not only children, but families walking up and down the road. And that is another um, big safety concern if we bring in additional people. Ideally, obviously, I would love to uh, not have any development, but I also know that legally, People are permitted to sell their lands. They are permitted to develop. But I would appreciate if the um, you know, Planning Commission Council would uh, consider the fact that, you know, can we keep this as uh, low density as possible, try to keep with the, the, what it looks like now in that entire neighborhood, which is single family uh, homes with, you know, approximately half acre lots. and you know, just try to, um, you know, keep in mind that the, uh, you know, the safety and the, um, sorry, my mind's going blank at this point, I had a point, but, uh, you know, just would really appreciate that you would consider the residents uh, who are living there, living here. Our taxes have already gone up substantially. Uh, I also don't feel that the taxpayers should have to pay for a red light, um, even partially, to support a developer that wants to add, you know, a tremendous amount of houses in that area. I don't think that is exactly fair. And um, so that's, we'd just like, really appreciate if we could uh, keep this, um, you know, as, as low density as possible because of all the reasons that I have, have stated. And the fire station being there is definitely a good point. People also go there to have to drop off their recycling at the fire station, so that's additional traffic. Um, and we got, uh, you know, you add these new houses, you have not only the <coughs> residents living there, you have UPS, you have FedEx, you have food delivery people that are delivering there. And it's just, uh, it's not just the people living there. So, um, and I guess that's, that's all I can think of for right now. But um, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Uh, Christina Romano, 66 Scenic Ridge Drive. Um, I just want to come up and just, uh, you know, reaffirm everything that everybody else has said. The traffic on East McMurray in that area is really bad. Um, I went to pick up my son from the middle school last week to go to a doctor's appointment at 11.30 in the morning. And to make a left-hand turn out of there, I sat at that, uh, turn, that turning lane from the uh, middle school for about 15 minutes trying just to make a left-hand turn. And it all, you know, we have the, the stadium there during any kind of sports events. It's always backed up. We have to have police officers there to direct traffic because it gets so backed up. It goes all the way back to 19. So um, I just want to say that I support any uh, motion to change the zoning to low density. Thanks. Thank you. The reason I'm here, so I'm really concerned because years ago when my husband and I bought the house on uh, 646 East McMurray Road, we came to the closing. We were told that we weren't allowed uh, to put, you know, it had to be uh, half acre lots. You couldn't add stuff. Well, we have two acres. Um, we weren't allowed to have, um, we, were, we were allowed to have a horse. Well, I didn't want a horse. And we're allowed to have chickens, but we weren't allowed to have a rooster. Um, and then when Rachel bought the house uh, on uh, McNary, we were told we couldn't have uh, roosters <laughs> and chickens. And I said, that's fine. 
but um, there was like these rules and everything. Now, all of a sudden, there's this huge change where um, they're going to put, <laughs> planning on putting all these townhouses, and I wouldn't want to stop progress, but surely everyone that lives in this area, um, couldn't they possibly find another area to build these townhouses? I know there's a lot of money at stake here, but there's also a lot of lives at stake. Um, I have a brain aneurysm that could burst at any time. I'm, I know Rachel's a lot. Um, fortunately, the fire station's right there, around the corner. Uh, I've had to have them come and pick me up and take me to the hospital several times just recently because I've had, um, I fell and I, I fractured five bones in my pelvic uh, area, um, just falling. And, um, and thank God the ambulance could get to me right away because I was, was passing out from the pain and it was just an accident, I felt just, you know, whatever. It happens, a lot of people fall and get hurt. If they add more traffic um, to the, you know, this area where they're planning, and I understand, I don't blame you for wanting to do this. I don't blame you at all. However, I just think adding more, more traffic and more of this, um, it's just going to be, someone's going to die, that's all. And of course, you know, people die every day, but um, if something happens to me, I know she's going to be affected. You know, my family's going to be, I have a lot of extended family, and um, you know, um, there's so much traffic now, and we just bought the place, um, and we love it. We, she loves it, I love it. And I like, you know, we go back and forth. Um, it's it's really beautiful street, beautiful. It's if I had to walk to Giant Eagle, I could do it. Um, but adding all this traffic, uh, many, many, many times, I'll be backing down out of her driveway, and I'll, I look both ways. And there's no cars coming. And all of a sudden, there's cars zooming, and I just stop and say, oh, you know, wow, oh, it was close. So, and that's fine because you have to, when you're driving, you have to look both ways. If they add 80 some townhouses, um, someone's gonna get hurt, so something's gonna happen. I, we need to stick with what I was told when we bought our house on East McMurray Road, that they had to be half, half acre. You know, you couldn't put lots of houses. We were thinking of put, building another house for Rachel across the creek in our, uh, two acres, and then I thought, well, it might be a problem. It might, you know, it might stop it. They might, I don't know. So she ended up buying the one on McNary. But I'm, I'm just really concerned about this, and it's just, I, I'm no, I really don't have a lot of value as a person. I'm just, you know, an old lady, and um, but I, I just feel like I was told that they had these rules. It had to be. Half acres, you couldn't put, you know, townhouses, and and all suddenly there's this on the table to change what um, we trusted wasn't going to change. That's all. I just, you know, just from my heart, um, I'm just worried about the safety of the children. There's a lot of kids, and we shouldn't have to worry about that. We're in Peters. This is like the best township, and I think in the whole of Pennsylvania. And, um, and now it's going to change because somebody wants to wants to do that. So that's all. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other audience comments? Am I allowed to comment in there? I think that's no. against the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can. Yes, you can comment. Again. You're allowed. There's not a rule. Yes. Come on. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, what about that Maid Marion development? They're not on half acre lots up there. You know, I don't get this half acre lot rule. I really don't. Because how did Maid Marion get 
in there, Mr. Lauer. How did it? It's a different zoning district. Yes, yeah, so there was not this standard rule that it should have to be half acre lots. You know. Thank you. Um, any uh, questions from council? Comments? Mr. Lauer, do we know when this property was put into the current zoning? What was the rationale behind it, given the fact that it's all surrounded by half-acre lots? I'll be honest with you, I'd have to go back and research that guy. I can't tell you that off the top of my head. Yeah, because none of us, I don't know, Gary may have been on council at the time that happened. None of us were here. And, and, and I guess my, my question is, if council knew at the time when that land was rezoned that those five half-acre lots existed along East McMurray Road, would that have affected council's decision to put it in a different district? Because when... You look at those five lots being there, I mean, the land is surrounded on three sides by half-acre lots, yeah. you know? I mean, I mean, so I don't know whether that had, you know, whether, whether the, if had council known that those five lots were there in 2014 when this land was put in that, in the current zoning district, would council have taken a different action at that time? I don't know and, because none it, of us were on it. Yeah, and quite frankly, we didn't know those five lots existed. They do not show on our GIS system, and they do not show on the county tax map. Uh, Dr. Zakowski uh, uh, has provided us with the, the recording of those plans that go back into the, what, the 1950s? Is that, 1959. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments before we close the public hearing? Well, I was going to suggest that rather than close the hearing, that we continue the hearing. You, um, the you have a, a number of councilmen who could not be here tonight because they're out of out of town. Um, for them to be able to participate um, uh, in in voting on this, I think they would have to have an opportunity to participate in the public hearing. It's going to be my recommendation, although this is, can, you can take action on it if you choose tonight, it's going to be my recommendation that council will postpone uh, taking action on the rezoning until a future council meeting where where we have well, additional you, members of council yeah, present. Given the uh, importance of this decision, the fact that there's only four of us here, I don't think four of us should be deciding for the entire, the residents of this town should elect seven people, seven people should be making the decision on this. So I'll make a motion that we continue the public hearing to the next council meeting, which would be what, April 22nd, right? And yes. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, none opposed, four nothing, Mr. Lauer. So the public hearing will continue at the next meeting. At that time, we'll have a closing and a vote. So I appreciate everyone's attendance tonight. I know people wanted a definitive answer. Uh, there will be one at the next meeting. Thank you for your time. Comments? I feel like we already had this, but I guess we didn't. Uh, less than five minutes for any non agenda item. None? Nothing to say right now. <laughs> Maureen Jones from East McMurray Road. I was just wondering, could you provide either an update or a status on the intersection of East McMurray, Thompsonville, and Bebot, the, the work of, I guess, uh, expanding the intersection up there? I saw new survey stakes that were recently placed up in that area. And since I live on East McMurray, I'm going to be impacted when that construction hits. Yes. Um, what's occurring, what we've been told is going to occur this year are all the utility relocations. So I think the water company's pretty much done at this point. So I don't know what the next utility is that will be involved. I'm assuming it's going to be um, electric and telecommunications. But so, but all throughout this year, you're going to see utility relocation work in that intersection. Okay. And when's the actual intersection going to be worked um, Supposedly, uh, there's supposed to be a letting of the contract this fall with construction to begin in 2025. Okay. It's, it's actually already been awarded the Is contract. It? Yeah. It's a pen contract. Oh, okay. See, he knows something I don't. <laughs> so then the construction will begin next 2025. year. 2025. Well, PennDOT's telling us. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank Maybe you. I do have something to say now. So, okay, I have the water company on my road now, Robin Hood. All right. 
we had the gas company last year, you know, and then they came and they paved our road very nicely. Now they've just jacked it all up and made a, you know, nice strip. So I guess that's not going to get repaved, right? Yeah, the I mean, water company will repave it. And I mean the whole road? Correct. The whole road. Well, thank well, God for require, that. require, what, an entire lane to be... If, if it's, if it's more than five years old, it's just one lane. If it's less than five years old, it's full lane. Full lane. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, even though we had it redone last year? Correct. But by the gas company? No. The gas company redid our road last year. Somebody redid our road. Because after they tore it up, then somebody re came and repaved it. Was that last year? Township mm -hmm. repaved it two years ago. I think it was two years ago, oh, yeah. wasn't it? Well, whatever. One year, two years. What's the difference? I'm well, I just remember when the... I remember the speed hump in front of your house not being there anymore just because I thought it was funny because the cars were still stopping or slowing down because yeah. the sign was there even though the speed yeah. hump wasn't. Yeah, and they, they put that speed bump back, yeah. So but what I'm saying is, so th are they going to repave that after yes. this? Yes. Oh, I can't believe it. So is, is there any more companies going to come and tear up the road again? Is this just going to, they just tear up the road again? You don't know. All right. Good news, Air Machiner. Free paved road. Peters isn't paying for it. Any other, any other audience comments? I have a comment about the wood briar. Should yeah. I wait until? Yes, sir. Yeah, when that comes up, we'll open it for discussion. Yeah. All right. Seeing none, unfinished business, none. Moving on to new business. Ordinance amending Peter Township Code of Ordinance Chapter 440 Zoning, Section 400 District Classification Figure 400.1, quote, current Peters Township Zoning Map. And well, as stated before, I think all seven members of council should vote on this, so I'll make a motion and we table this to the next meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, for nothing, Mr. Lauer. Item B, approval for recording purposes of the Aaron Nemus Holdings LLC consolidation and dedication plan shown on revised drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates uh, dated March 20th, 2024 for Andrew Zahulski. So what you see on the uh, screen is a, um, a drawing that shows the consolidation of um, five lots into a, a single lot. Uh, at the March 14th uh, meeting of the Planning Commission, they reviewed this consolidation plan and provided a recommendation to Council that it be approved uh, subject to two conditions. One, the Peters Township Sanitary Authority approve the plan and that the revised plan uh, be submitted with all outstanding comments uh, corrected. The latter has been done. The only thing that I would ask in addition that the lot lines that are be to abandoned to be labeled with text one of them is but the remainder are not and that land hook z symbols be placed on those so that it's clear at some time in the future that in fact this is a consolidation it's my recommendation that peter Township council approve for reporting purposes the uh aaron nemus holdings consolidation and dedication plan is shown on drawings prepared by jr gales so moved subject to the condition stated by mr lauer Second. Well, motion and a second. Um, real quickly, what is this area zoned? Sorry. It is zoned mixed, mixed use activity center. Mixed use activity. Okay. Yeah. I uh, have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? For nothing, Mr. Lauer. Uh, item C approval for recording purposes of tracks from subdivision plan number four is shown on drawings prepared by Keystone Surveying and Mapping Inc. dated February 9th, 2024. Didn't we just see this a couple weeks ago? You saw this in January and you approved it. At that point in time, there was a small portion in Union Township, which is, if you're actually familiar with the <coughs> tracks farm market, there's a pond down there. Half of that pond sits in Union Township. Union Township had to approve the subdivision and only did so with conditions that were unacceptable to the uh, to the applicant. And so they came back and this this subdivision only handles properties in Peters Township. And it's it's essentially in Peters Township the same as what you looked at before. And it's my recommendation that council approve the track farm subdivision. So moved. Second. A motion a second All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? For nothing, Mr. Lauer. Uh, item D, approval of Woodbriar Estates preliminary land development plan as prepared by JMS Engineering Revised in March 20, 2024 for Venetia Road, LLC. Mr. Lauer. 
So this is a uh, plan that uh, preliminary plan submission um, for a piece of property that's located at 387 Benicia Road. Um, the original submittal was made at a time when this parcel was included in the Conservation Residential Overlay District. And as such, the developer has a right to utilize those regulations um, that are contained in the Overlay District. Before Council tonight is the latest revision of the plan dated March 20th, 2024. Um, this plan um, was submitted um, uh, at a special meeting on February 26th, 22nd to the Planning Commission. And at such time, there were numerous issues highlighted by the township staff and its consultants. And uh, the Planning Commission uh, felt that they should be reconciled before offering a recommendation. Residents in attendance offered additional comments that needed to be addressed as well. The, the Planning Commission noted concern with its ability to work through the comments in a timely manner and suggested the applicant offer a time extension. Uh, the attorney representing the developer refused to provide such an extension, and therefore the Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend to Council that the plan be denied. That being said, since that time, um, what we would have hoped to have been the normal course, uh, we have been working with the developer as well as the, the developer's engineer to address all of the concerns that the township staff had, as well as a number of the issues that um, were raised by, by residents at that time. And the plan you see before you tonight, uh, we believe addresses uh, the vast majority of, of those concerns. Um, and the planning department uh, is recommending, as well as myself, that the plan be approved subject to um, uh, six conditions. Um, the developer's here tonight, and he can uh, go through the plan and explain exactly what you see in front of you. And if you want, we can go through and attempt to go through all the issues that were addressed, if that's important to the council. Thank you. Would the developer like to come up for the comments, please? Good evening, John Schleicher with JMS Engineering. And we actually work with uh, KDH Engineering uh, on, on this project, so you, the title block is uh, representative of both, both companies. Uh, we want to use this aerial image here to, to present kind of a, a perspective of the development with the, with the surrounding neighborhood, which, uh, you know, the, the density for the development and the product that's anticipated is consistent with the with the surrounding area. The property is in, uh, I believe this is the first time the plan is in front of council, correct? This I, version. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'll give a little bit more of a, uh, a, a, a presentation. Uh, the property is 35.1 acres located in the uh, LD, low density residential zoning district within the conservation residential overlay. Uh, as Mr. Lauer indicated, we've actually been working with township staff for over a year on this particular design. Uh, the, the design that was previously anticipated for this had 83 uh, dwelling units, which was under the option B, 2.5 dwelling units per acre uh, option under the uh, conservation residential overlay. Uh, this, uh, this proposal is under option A, which is the, the least dense option under the the conservation residential overlay. It allows for two dwelling units per acre <coughs> with a minimum of 25% open space. And with the 52 lots proposed on 35.1 acres, that is a density of 1.5 dwelling units per acre. The, uh, again, just, just working with, with staff and, and uh, throughout the process, we've increased the, the lot sizes that were originally anticipated with this design to a minimum one-third acre. So each lot in, uh, in the development is minimum one-third acre in size. And uh, above and beyond the 25% open space required, uh, we're proposing 33% open space. Uh, there's, and when you subtract out uh, stormwater management facilities and easements and uh, a couple uh, things, we're still at a net 31% open space. And getting back to the kind of the density and the 
uh, consistency with the surrounding neighborhood. If you would hypothetically distribute that open space throughout the, the, the individual lots, they would average uh, over a half acre in size, approximately 0.54 acres. Again, if that open space were to be uh, distributed to, throughout the plan, to compare it to Sienna Woods to the, to the north, and north is to the left of the page for orientation. Uh, Venetia Road is in a, uh, runs east to west in the southern portion of the, of the site. Uh, the Sienna Woods uh, lots are a minimum one half acre in size with, with no open space. So what's the density here, lots per acre now for this current plan? 1.5. Okay. And how many houses? 52. 52. Yes. Paul, do you have any idea what the density was in Sienna Woods? Was it 1.2? I don't know. What's the what's the permitted density? On permitted that? density in the low density residential is 1.2 units okay. as a max. All right. So at most it was 1.2. Okay. Is that how Sienna Woods Phase Six was developed? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. Yeah, so I can't tell you what the density would be in that plan. Right. But, it, but I think we can probably all agree it's not less than this. Yes. There's not a lot lower than a half acre there, right? Many of them are larger than half acre. And you have a yard. And your green spaces are crossed. Yep, yep. The road they need to come to the front. No. I'll let you finish. Sure. I'll, I'll be brief. No, okay. uh, so, so we, we did uh, design the road layout. The, 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 there is a, a road connection to Wildbriar Drive uh, in the Sienna Woods plan in the northeast portion of the site. That was uh, uh, you know, required just by township, by township policy. But we did the road layout in order to discourage through traffic. Instead of having the connection to Venetia Road in the eastern portion of the site, we, we kept it to the western portion to, you know, cause several movements to, again, dis discourage through traffic. A straight shot of what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. Uh, as Mr. Lauer indicated, we, have, we do have a code compliant plan. We, we're in receipt of the planning director review, the township engineer review gateway, uh, and the township uh, traffic engineer review, uh, all of which I would, I would call clean uh, re review with some minor house, housekeeping type items to be, uh, that are recommended to be uh, in, in those particular review letters to be addressed with final, uh, final design. Uh, we, we did get a lot of, there was a lot of discussion at the planning commission meeting, uh, both with the, the commission themselves and with, uh, and with the residents. One of the issues was, was traffic, um, which, you know, I understand that's, that, that's going to be an issue we are uh, you know, proposing the uh, traffic impact fees with, with the development as, as a requirement. Uh, the per, there's a particular lot in the northeast corner. If, if uh, Paul, you could switch to one of the uh, plans that show the, the parcels. Uh, that's great. So the, the very uh, farthest lot to the northeast, that was kind of squared off in the back and uh, was pulled back to keep it out of the, uh, there's a drainage easement that's associated with a, a small drainage course that traverses the, the property in that area. That's that, that's that dashed line that you see. Uh, we did add, uh, we did add additional uh, plantings and the buffer yards. And if, if you wouldn't mind, Paul, going back to the aerial. Thank you. Uh, so, so with the, with the incorporated into the open space, the entire perimeter uh, contains uh, open space. So there's a 25-foot buffer setback along adjoining properties. Uh, there's no buffer screening uh, required, but nonetheless, uh, the existing vegetation is proposed to remain in those areas uh, in, in, again, uh, permanent open space. Uh, and we did add so, so, some of the uh, discussion was on the areas where there, there is not uh, mature woodlands in those buffer areas, and we added those in pink on, on this plan, consisting of uh, several deciduous, a, a mix of deciduous and evergreen trees. Again, not as a code requirement, but just as a, uh, 
you know, sign of, sign of good faith in working with the uh, work, working with the existing residents. Uh, there's also a significant number of. And Paul, if you can go to the uh, the presentation slide that was provided today with with more the black and white. Uh, I don't know if I have that. Uh, uh, this this is all I have. Uh, that's okay. If you can go back to the, to the aerial, then it, it depicts it. But there's uh, there's not a lot of numbers associated with it. So all the yellow. The yellow symbols along Venetia Road, yeah, yeah in those uh, those buffer yards where, where the lots, some lots back up to one another. Uh, yep, thank you. And then in the rear of the other lots, kind of around the perimeter of the site where you see hatching there, uh, there's a requirement for slope uh, restoration. I'm not sure the exact language in, in, in the code, but there's approximately 300 uh, seedling trees to be planted on those slopes that will kind of supplement the the, 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 buff, the existing vegetation to remain along the along the perimeter. And then, uh, as mentioned, the, the pink is the uh, proposed additional plantings that have been added since the uh, actually since our submittal and the last meeting. It just is in a form of a in a form of this exhibit. If if council sees fit to. Uh, What's your plan yeah. for keeping the deer from eating the seedlings? <laughs> I'm sure they'll put the, uh, I'm not sure what they're, what they're called, but the protective. Oh, the little brown things, right. right. tubes. Okay. Right. Are there multiple phases of development? Uh, there, there's, there's only two phases. Um, the, the first phase will include all the, all the road and utility layout. Uh, and that was actually another thing on the, uh, one of the items that came up in the, at the planning commission meeting was, uh, the neighboring resident to the west, Mr. Mike, uh, pointed out that there may be a, there, there's a potential wetland in the area that's that's outlined in red. There's a uh, a small area. It's, it's kind of an unusual uh, uh, unusual uh, situation where it's an isolated wetland. There's no there's no surface water that feeds it or that it discharges to. It just kind of uh, it discharges. Develop, uh, I'm sure it discharges. It's fresh drain. Gotcha. Uh, so, so the proposal for that and why it's included in phase two is to, to mitigate in, in the southern portion of the, of the property where there is an existing wetland, a perennial stream, that's Peters Creek, is just off of the property to the south. Uh, and there is an existing wetland in that portion. And the, the proposal would be to mitigate at a, a, a ratio of at least two to one. Uh, Area-wise, and that would, in environmental scientist terms, have a higher value and function, since it is connected to a uh, an existing wetland and a, uh, a, a, a perennial stream uh, slash watercourse adjacent to the uh, to the existing floodway. And, and all that would have to be done under DEP permit, and that's why you wouldn't develop. There'd be two phases here. Correct. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. If there's any questions or if I could elaborate more on anything, I'd be glad to. Now, this development's going to have an HOA, right? Uh, correct. And, Mark, I see one of the conditions is they're going to uh, take what's the uh, temporary cul de sac up at the uh, top there, which I guess would be what the uh, northwest. Uh, yeah. They're going to turn that into a trap, into a what landscaped. Landscape media yeah. to basically slow down traffic in terms of just traffic cutting through. And once that's in, whose responsibility is it going to be to maintain that? Is that going to be ours or is that going to be the HOAs? I don't know if we've really discussed that. Well, I don't think it can be the HOAs because it's beyond it's beyond the edge of the property. We think that it would be the township's responsibility. Yeah. You know, the, the, the condition to have that in, the developer's prepared to do that work, and, and the neighbor who's adjacent to this is in support of that. But for that to happen, um, we would have to get a property, a permanent property right to allow that uh, uh, temporary call to stack to stay there. So um, we, I, you know, I think we have to be careful about the way the condition is worded. It, it has to be that based upon the township's ability to get a property interest, a permanent property interest that the developer would require to, to do the uh, construction work. So who owns the? 
So what? The temporary cul-de-sac is still owned by the developer then. The no temporary the cul-de-sac by uh, by that that property owner. They have a right to have it removed. And we own it on the other side. Right, so we own it on one side, right? Yeah, right. right so right. It, on, and I don't know whether are they property owners here tonight. We are. Yes. Yeah. And I think they're in support of that, so I don't think that's a problem. As far as construction vehicles during development, what is the plan with that? Is it to enter through Venetia Road? Yeah, yes, sir. Everything would enter uh, through Venetia. Thank you. You guys have an HOP for this yet? Uh, no, we're in a process. It's not been issued. But we've had multiple cycles of review and Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think the, the one thing that I think it's also is probably relevant, although you can't control this by the subdivision. These are the elevations that were submitted by the developer in terms of the buildings they intend to construct. Yeah, nice. yeah uh, pr the proposal would be for three car garages, typically uh, side entrance garages, uh, with the exception of when we have what they call a bolt-on, there might be one garage door facing the road in the case of the, the upper center image where there's two car garage on, on the side and one would, would face the road. But all, all the products that you see here uh, have three car garages. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Any uh, comments from the audience? My name is Luke Cody. I live at 109 Tiberi Lane. Um, I guess just first thing, uh, Mr. Lauer, you mentioned there's six conditions under which you're recommending the approval. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them on the agenda. If we were supposed to review them in advance, would you mind sharing them with? Sure. Us? Um, first condition is the note on the plan concerning the, the maintenance responsibility for the auxiliary parking space that are shown on the plan. Um, the second one is on uh, sheet D1. Point two, place a note stating existing uh, vegetation to remain within the 25-foot buffer setback where possible based upon the grading proposed improvements as shown on the plan set. The exception to this is for the maintenance activities related to the removal of dead, diseased, or distressed trees. In addition, that those areas be labeled on sheet D12 uh, uh, as not being disturbed to the greatest extent possible. Three, three, modify the note uh, referring to the maintenance of the open and landscaped areas on sheet D2.0 uh, as followed. Propose open space parcels and landscape buffer easements located between lots 121 and 141 are to be maintained by the Homeowners Association. The landscape buffer easement should also be labeled on, on sheet D2.0. Uh, four, a non-erosive uh, stabilized surface for vehicle access to the stormwater basins uh, will need to be shown on the final plans, including construction details. Peter's Township Code Section 371-20B16C shows the approximate location of these accesses on the plan. Five, the developer um, will commit to using the temporary cul-de-sac as a traffic calming device by working with the township to make sh to make the cul-de-sac permanent uh, with a planted interior uh, median. That, that, that condition needs to be modified uh, to indicate that the township has a responsibility for maintaining, uh, for acquiring the property right to do so. And six, address any outstanding comments and issues as may be noted by the Peters Creek Sanitary Authority. Gotcha, thank you. Appreciate sure. That. Mr. Lauer, those will be posted somewhere for the residents to see. Oh, they'll be, they'll certainly be part of the um, the minutes to the night's meeting, um, but um, we, we can make those available, yes. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so I think the first comment that I was gonna make just for, to invite some discussion, I think has already been answered. So I was gonna ask for um, you know, just confirmation from JMS that the, uh, open space does actually consider those, or I guess remove the stormwater detention facilities that are planned to be part of the, the open space. So I think that was confirmed yeah. already. John, can you come yes. up and stand here? Because you're, you're going to get more questions. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, my second comment is also related to the open space. So 
you know, I think as part of the ordinance for the conservation residential overlay, um, I'm just reading it's 440-406.1, uh, dwelling unit lots and integrated resources such as shared community facilities should be accessed from only interior and local streets. So I think when you look at the orientation of the way this is built out, the majority or a large portion of the open space is actually across Venetia Road on that south, um, the south side parcel of land. I think it's just over four acres. So, I mean, I, I don't think that would be considered accessible by an interior resource, considering that in order to access the open space, most of the residents would have to cross a state road, Venetia Road. Can I jump in real quick? Paul, did you get the email that I know council got this morning? Um, basically laid out the case for why the open space wasn't uh, uh, in compliance with the, I the ordinance. Not, and I uh, did the gentleman here that. just brought one of those up. Um, go ahead, continue. I, okay. you, you're kind of I mean, that's, bringing up what I was going to bring up, but go ahead. Yeah, so that's kind of it. I mean, I don't know if you can elaborate on that, but that's, fact, that's the second point that I had. So I don't know if you want to talk about it. So, so you're stating it's not in compliance? The yeah, way that I would read that, I would read no, right? Is it accessible via an interior road? I would say Venetia Road is not an interior road. That's how I read it as well. Can well I, do, you, do you want to talk about how much open space there is with, with please with that? That'd, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, so in, in the process and the kind of the evolution of, of this design, the the, the the request was made by the township to uh, you know, increase lot sizes from from what they were varying, uh, you know, in the, in the area of a quarter acre to a third of an acre, to uh, to have minimum one third acre. Uh, in the process of doing that, we had a large uh, area of uh, of open space in between in between the lots that back up to one another, and in addition to that. Uh, we had more open space around the perimeter to, to achieve the one third acre minimum lot size. The, the, the lots got stretched out. So the frontage uh, very, very, very didn't simple. really change. The frontage did, did not really change. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, and prior to that uh, revision, we did uh, have the the 25 percent, and it was you know kind of coincidentally, but but also by design, and that. We, we did have the 25% within just the northern parcel, and the four acres to the south was, you know, a, above and beyond. And we had in the neighborhood of, you know, 35 to 40% total open space. So with the uh, increased lot sizes, uh, we we lost some of that open space on on the northern portion. But this is all this is all uh, one parcel, so the connectivity or, or the the Bisection by by Venetia Road is is just kind of coincidental, like a like a stream would be, I guess. Um, I think a state road is different than a stream, but yeah. but we do appreciate the you know lar making the larger lot sizes and Thank you. Know, making it uh, lower density. <coughs> yeah. So maybe just a go back to one of the things you mentioned. Were you suggesting that without the four acres across Venetia Road that there would still be, this plan would still meet the 30 or 25 percent compliance uh, with open space? One, one of the previous designs in the kind of the, the evolution of this plan that still had the 52 lots, they were smaller, it, it, it would have met, it, it would meet, it, it could meet that uh, okay. That would be what size would those lots be? Uh, between a quarter acre and a half acre. Okay. Or I'm sorry, between a quarter and a third. Quarter and a third. And now these are all a third, right? Minimum, yes, sir. Okay. So. so to meet the open space, the lots have to get smaller. <laughs> Correct. Okay. That was the majority of what I had, so thanks. Thank you. Any other audience comments? Uh, Christina Romano, 626 Santa Bridge Drive. Um, I live just um, east, I guess, of this development, and I take Venetia Road every day. 
uh, back and forth, and um, it's, I, I don't know what this miles per hour is, but people typically drive that road about 30 to 40 miles per hour. And we have a lot of trucks there and stuff. And my concern is families, little kids trying to cross the street to get to their open space. It just doesn't seem logical, practical, or safe. Um, I, I don't know where would they even cross. There's like, it doesn't show any kind of like walkway or anything like that. Um, you know, we hit deer constantly in that spot. <laughs> There's always a, a dead deer on the side of the road. So I just, it just doesn't seem like a, a practical use of land for, um, and then, you know, the other question is who's going to maintain that? The HOA is gonna be responsible, I guess, for maintaining that property, but um, I'm, you know, concerned with the uh, safety portion of that and whether or not it, it should be used in that way. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? So, before Mr. Goon <coughs> speaks, what plans do you have for that open space on the other side? Yeah, that, that would generally be kept in a, a more natural, natural so it would condition. be actual open space? Yes. Yeah. You no know, parks or anything, uh, and just let Mother Nature take over? Correct, with the exception of the stormwater right. management facility would be maintained okay. on a regular, fairly regular basis. Well, I'm, uh, my name is Ed Guna. I live at uh, 112 Wildbriar Drive, which is a house in the northwest corner right at the uh, uh, cul-de-sac. So I guess my main interest, uh, I guess, was expressed in the planning committee. We were concerned about traffic, uh, you know, safety and so forth. I don't want to go over that again. I think that's been probably addressed uh, ad nauseum, but the traffic being... And we had a couple of uh, considerations, and Mr. Lauer has been very uh, helpful in uh, getting us uh, some, some re remediation around that uh, turnaround area. But I had just one other question, and I can't tell from the map from where we were sitting. There was a parking space, uh, I guess three or four parking spaces up on that side. Mm -hmm. uh, have they been eliminated? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you there. Um, and those red red lines that you had before on the other map were those those I was interpreting that you're putting trees, uh, kind of shielding our properties to some extent from the from the plan. Exactly. Yes, sir. Because because uh, we're our house uh, our lot uh, it adjoins the plan and our house is on the far end of the lot and there's probably we're probably literally I think it's about 15 feet from m our, our bedroom to our property line, so we're very, very close to the development, so those trees or some sort of uh, barrier there would be uh, certainly appreciated. And again, I, uh, one final thing, uh, again, not, not a developer or, uh, I guess, but it seems to me that a simple way to improve their, or to meet the uh, green space law would be just to cut out a few of the houses. You know, and there's a couple right along that, uh, strip there, uh, I think it was lot 120 and 121 uh, or something like that, right across from that entrance. Uh, you could eliminate a couple of lots. Uh, it seemed to me to be able to get some, you know, a little more green space throughout the whole plan. So, uh, comments? Thank you, Mr. Green. Neil Mickets, 109 Autumn Way. And 324 Venetia Road. And I, that is the three lots that are consolidated where I have a building. I'm wondering if you could address a little bit more on you went pretty quickly on that spring remediation. That spring is a heavy spring. If you were there Monday, you would see that even one lot further to the left, there was geysers coming up along the fence. That is a major, major spring system. And I know for a fact that it is drained and it's going through a French drain system to the drainage system right now that's feeding the pond, farm pond down below, then exits and comes down 
the drainage overflow ditch under Venetia Road to the right side of my property on 324 Venetia Road. That's how that spring is being drained right now. And I would like you to explain what your proposal is for moving that drainage and taking care of that spring because I think it's going to affect me down on 324 Venetia Road. And I'm very interested in that, and I didn't really understand what you said. Sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I really did not elaborate, so I appreciate the opportunity to. Uh, so th this, this plan does not depict topography, but, but the, uh, the site does drain kind of generally east to west with a, a ridge kind of being in the middle. So a lot of the, the runoff that, that does run through, through, that, through that area down behind your, your property yes. uh, there will be intercepted, tied into the, the storm sewer system. Because we get really hit. I'm just going to say we get sure. really hit from the top side of Sienna Woods. I mean, I, you, we're taking it. That, that is a 12-inch outfall pipe that takes the water from the retention pond in Sienna Woods right now. Mm -hmm. It's saturated. I'm just going to say that valley is saturated uh, in between the two, my or Sienna Woods and the new development. And I think it's it's a there's a, a lot more water there than I think people realize. Yeah. And and I don't want to take all that water and stick it down there in the other low spot that's going to be a natural let it go to trees in 30 years piece of property, which, you know, Peters Creek did overflow and it did come out into that field pretty good. I'd say we saw a really good example of the 100 year floodplain this week or this past week. And to, to put more saturation down there is a concern. So I'll let you speak, but I'm just trying to let you know what I know after living right there for 28 years. Sure, sure. Uh, so for, for council's benefit, there's a small pond here and then a, a, a water course that traverses along the, the, western, the western property line there. Uh, so all of the, the, how, the, all the rooftops, driveways, the roadways will all be tied into the storm sewer system, which will be conveyed to this large facility in the, uh, in the southern portion of the site. From there, meeting all required township, county, state regulations with uh, water quality, water volume control, and, and, and rate control, and then discharge directly into, uh, in, into Peters Creek. It is designed to discharge actually above Peters Creek to maintain, Run. The, to, to, to maintain the, the existing wetland here and the, the proposed uh, a large wetland area here, and then you know, prior to kind of making its way into the, into the stream, the topography on the south side of Venetia Road all drains to the south, and then into the stream. Yeah. So, so it would not drain, you know, just to, for to, your to, clarity. To the we also own all this right here, and so everything that here has to come across us before it goes into Peter's Creek. So how do you propose to get that to happen? You know, that puddle of a pond that's down there right now is more of a just a place to breed frogs and mosquitoes. But I'm just in my mind thinking a better development of that area below for the retention pond for the whole new development might be something worth thinking about before it becomes a problem after it's developed. And, and you know, all these great minds in this room right now to think about how we could take care of that before it is a problem. Uh, I'm not here to fight against a, a development today. You know, I, I do have a couple more questions for you, but I think we need to take a good, solid look at where 
not only the runoff water that's going into the new retention pond is, but that big spring, which is in phase two. So phase one's already being built. And we, I think we should have a really good plan for phase two before phase one starts, because I'm gonna pay the price if phase one, two doesn't work in two places. And it's a concern. And I think this is, this is the time to air our concerns so we can put our heads together. I could let you know what I already know. And maybe you guys could go back to the drawing board a little bit and think about, is that really the best place for that pond? And is that pond a primarily dry pond or will it be wet? Uh, it's, it's designed to- It'll be a dry pond. water yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's a lot of water to dewater. <laughs> you know, how many more 12 inch pipes can we send down to Peters Creek? Are we going to change the 100 year floodplain? I know we can't because the development's going to say we can't. But I know we also know that there's more water down there today since Sienna Woods and all the other plants were built too. And just the thought process. Maybe we could do something different. I don't know what it is. I'm just bringing that up because I know there's a lot of water there. Yeah, would be glad to, to, to meet on site or, or yeah, I mean, or, or otherwise. Last uh, week would have been great. <laughs> uh, in that, in, I could also say that I've lived in Sienna Woods for 28 years, but I lived in Peters Township all my life. My grandparents grew up in Hackett, so I know that road well. And I know how many times that has been underwater in my lifetime. Not too many more than it was just now. I also have a question on your vegetation drawing where you had the yellow lines. There's a lot of yellow lines going out into Sienna Woods, which it, actually you could back up to that last picture because the green was just about where the yellow is. What is that? That is. That is just a, the, well, the, the, the yellow line, squiggly line mm -hmm. kind of going around the perimeter, that's just an outline of the woods line. That's existing vegetation. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, I was sir. wondering if yeah. you, well, how you were dealing with that. Yeah, it's the existing wooded vegetation. And, and it was hatched on, uh, on the other plan just to kind of, just for, for that reason, to highlight what was, you know, what, what's there. And, and, and some of the other yellow lines, uh, like I said, the yellow hatching depicts the slope areas that are that are to be, uh, you know, revegetated. And, and when you're showing the yellow dots, those are young trees. Yes, sir. And the the, the pink is vegetation of evergreens and mix. Uh, the, the pink is, it, the pink is is what's been added since the yeah. That's like, is that a larger planting? Yes, sir. Uh, like, yeah, I, I think. Uh, Green caliper trees or something like that. I, 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 I think we show the two. Two inch. Better township two inch. Yeah, we show two inch is a pretty good tree. Yeah. And uh, I believe the evergreens are six feet uh, minimum height of planting. And th that's also something would be open to discussing if if you had a preference of more deciduous, less evergreens, mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, well, I, I we're going to be talking more about the open space on Venetia Road and how it's left. So I'd, I'd hate to see it turn into, right now it's a mowed field. And for it to turn into a briar put infested place for the next 25 years before it gets trees and starts to look good and I'm gone, you know. I made a big investment on Venetia Road. I'd like to keep it nice. It was a requirement for me to keep Venetia Road nice. I think it should be a requirement for this development to keep what they disturb nice. Uh, that's my questions. I, I have some, maybe some private questions for you about some other things. But, uh, Great. Because we do own that property. And I, I just don't understand how you're getting your sewer line in there. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the audience or council? 
I just want to mention to you guys, uh, at the last uh, planning meeting, uh, when we got together, probably 80% of the questions and concerns were raised by uh, other residents that unfortunately couldn't make it tonight about the traffic flow and the increased traffic that's going to be going up Wildbriar Drive and onto Hardwood because everything in the township is in that direction. I mean, Venetia Road is nice, you know, if you're going to the country store, if you're going to Finleyville, or, you know, or, or if you're going, you know, back down. But that, you know, this whole area to the left is going to be uh, hit by a lot of additional traffic. And I just have concerns, you know, there's no sidewalks, there's nothing. People walk their dogs all the time, young kids riding bikes through the, through the communities. It's going to be a safety issue. And I'm just, just raising that issue now. It was raised by people that are a lot better speakers than me at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted you guys to be, you know, particularly aware of that. And be, it's a concern, not so much for Rosemary and me, because, you know, we're, we're old folks again, no kids in the area, so it doesn't bother us. But a lot of people do a lot of walking and, you know, with the kids. And uh, that's going to be a, a high traffic area. And um, I think it's going to be an unsafe situation. Just, just for your consent. Unless we put a Starbucks down on Venetia Road. Yeah. Then we don't want to <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, good point, Mr. Good. Just more quick yeah. comment to second Mr. Good said. I mean, I guess, Mr. Lauer, with the recommendation that you're making to move forward with approval, I would maybe make an ask or a request, if it were possible, to consider an egress onto Venetia Road as opposed to connecting through Wildbriar. I think that would resolve a lot of the traffic and safety concerns. Me, myself, I live in Seattle Woods, I have three young kids. Second, everything that Mr. Guna said around the increased traffic that is inevitably going to just cut through Seattle Woods. Um, so I guess in addition to the six considerations or conditions that were recommended, if this were to move forward for approval, I would just simply ask that an egress onto Venetia Road as opposed to connecting through Wildbriar and Seattle Woods be considered. So you would want two egresses onto Venetia no, Road? I think he's saying eliminate the Correct. Or just, eliminate. Just have one. Correct. All right. Ingress and egress onto Venetia Road. Eliminate the connection to Seattle Woods. All right. Yeah, you could have said you could have a second uh, egress on the Venetia Road, uh, kind of a north and south. Right. You know, you have the existing ones. So there were some things. There were things done to the plan since it was initially presented to address the concerns about traffic. And I know John can either go through these or I can attempt to point them out. But well, traffic calming elements were incorporated into the plan. So you have raised intersections at, the, at both of these two intersections. There are also stop signs that it, uh, that uh, create controlled intersections, so people won't be able to to uh, move quickly through the plan. The other thing is that, based upon the recommendation from the traffic engineer, the vertical curves on the plan have been modified to so to accommodate um, uh, better visibility, particularly on the vertical curves. So, but you know, the township's policy is. Um, to have multiple ingress and egress into the plan. That connection that is being made at the cul-de-sac um, was designated su such when the plan above was put in. If you were to go out there today, you would see a sign that says an interconnection may be, may be uh, incorporated. So maybe just one comment to that, Mr. Lauer. Certainly appreciate the changes that have been made within this proposal for traffic alleviation that doesn't necessarily solve for Sienna Woods not having sidewalks, not having speed bumps. All those changes that are made within this plan serve Woodbriar. They do not consider the residents of Sienna Woods that are going to receive the traffic through our neighborhood. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the Woodbriar State's preliminary land development plans prepared by JMS Engineering revised March 20th, 2024 for Venetia Road, LLC, subject to the six conditions set forth in the planning memo with the change to condition five, adding that 
property rights need to be obtained in the uh, one half of the uh, temporary cul-de-sac that is not owned by the township. We have a motion for approval. We have a second. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So three to one. Motion passes. Mr. Lowe. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving forward, uh, a word of contract for the purchase of police vehicles through the Coast Stars Cooperative Purchasing Program. The 2024 budget includes an appropriation of $198,000 to acquire, acquire three vehicles for the police department. Late in 2023, uh, bec it became necessary to acquire a, a police vehicle early. And as a result, the intent in 2024 is to acquire and equip two vehicles. The purchase of the vehicles are being completed under the CoStars program. Um, Whitmer. Uh, Auto Group has uh, submitted a quote of $54,000 for each vehicle. Delivery is expected in July or August. These vehicles will need to be upfitted um, at an additional cost of $20,631. So the total cost for the two vehicles will be $149,262. What we're suggesting to award tonight is simply a contract for the for the purchase of uh, 2024 uh, Chevy Tahoes uh, for use by the, the uh, police department uh, in the amount of $108,000. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four nothing, Mr. Lara. Uh, next to agenda item, award a contract for the purchase of Hyena wheel load weighing devices. Yes, the 2024 budgeting uh, includes the equitable sharing program fund. This fund accounts for revenues received from by Peters Township as a result of the uh, police department's participation in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Task Force. In 2024, the equitable sharing program includes an appropriation of $40,000 for the purchase of uh, truck scales. Um, officer Bonzak is a certified motor carrier safety enforcement officer, which allows him to in inspect commercial vehicles. Um, the intent is to use these vehicles to ensure safety uh, of truck traffic in the township. One of the things that is unique is that um, we're suggesting that uh, these be done uh, as a sole source award. Um, there is only one distributor for Honey Scales. They are unique in that they are the scales that are used by the Pennsylvania State Police, and it is the Pennsylvania State Police who's responsible for the calibration of scales. It is these scales that Officer Bonzak was uh, trained on, and the other advantage of which is the, the maintenance calibration facilities located in Pennsylvania, eliminating the need to send the scales out of service. We've asked Mr. Smith for a um, for an opinion as to whether or not this would qualify uh, for a sole source purchase, and it's his opinion that it does. And so, there, so therefore, my recommendation that we award a contract to Load Meter Corporation in the amount of thirty-one thousand seven hundred seventy dollars for the purchase of six hundred WL one hundred one scales. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four nothing. Mr. Lauer. Next item, uh, award of contract for 2024 Peter Township Road Improvement Program. Mr. Yes, we uh, opened bids uh, two Fridays ago for the this year's road program. We had five bidders uh, submit bids. I uh, put a tabulation of the bids in council's docket. Um, Mealy and Mealy and Sons was the uh, low bidder. They've done our work for the past two years on the road program, done an excellent job. Um, we bid this with a base bid and two add alternate bids. Um, alternate A was the connection for basically Booney Drive, the back entry to the park through the Pemberley Manor plan down the Sugar Camp Road. Alternate B was Salisbury uh, Drive. We just bid that as an alternate just for flexibility purposes in case the prices came in way higher than we thought. Um, Salisbury is connected to Fireside, which is part of the base bid, so we, we would really like to do that. So in, in analyzing these bids and against the current budget, it's my recommendation that we uh, add the or award the uh, base bid and the alternate bid, Salisbury Drive, to Mealy and Mealy and Sons in the amount of $1,902,643.50. Just as a side note, um, 
We budgeted two million this year, so that would leave about a hundred thousand left over. We'd like to do a rejuvenator program that, you know, that, that we typically do. We're thinking that's going to be in the neighborhood of 150, which there'd be a, a budget shortage on paper. But in discussing with the township manager, we've, we've had this occur in the past, and in looking at some budget items that we know aren't going to be used this year, I think later in the year we could do a budget amendment and cover that rejuvenator program. So I think we're safe there, just so council knows. All right, I'll make a motion that we award a contract in the amount of $1,902,643.50 to Mealy and Mealy and Sons for the 2024 Peters Township Road Improvement Program. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four nothing, Mr. Lauer. Uh, next item, special permit for Giant Oaks Garden Club plant sale. Paul, is this the same thing we do every year when yep. we waive the fee? I'll make a motion that we waive the fee and that we approve the uh, temporary signage request. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing, Mr. Lauer. Uh, request for always be smiling to permit the construction of a wall on township owned property. So uh, Always Be Smiling had, is in the process of constructing a building uh, for their for their programs, uh, and then you know that is located near Mr. Robinson's property. Um, at the front of their building, there is a space between the trail and uh, and the building where they would like to be able to um, be able to have uh, individuals who are disabled. To, to be able to traverse it to get to the garden, which will be on the right-hand side. Right now, because of there's an elevation change and there's a slight slope to it, what they would like to do is construct a wall using Versa Lock. We, uh, Mark and I went down book at it. We don't have a problem with it. It goes from one foot to about three and a half feet. The only thing is that we believe that there needs to be a substantial fence along the wall so that nobody comes off the trail. Um, and uh, gets injured. As you are well aware, that piece of property is leased, long-term lease with Montour Trail. So there, we think there needs to be a three-way agreement between the Montour Trail Association, the township, and Always Be Smiling that determines uh, the basis upon which it's there, its liability, and when it can be removed if it becomes an impediment. So all I'm looking for tonight from council is uh, direction uh, to the solicitor to drop a, a uh, agreement to have that occur and then on the basis of that, that agreement being acceptable to the solicitor that the township manager be authorized to sign it on behalf of half of the township. And the agreement of course would say we have no responsibility to maintain, fix, or do anything. Or, like and, we, their and somebody else is going to intend us for any liability associated with it. All right, so moved. Second. Which is second on favor. All right. All right. Those four nothing. Uh, payroll and bills. Yes. Uh, I reviewed those prior to this evening's meeting. Or, yeah, prior to the meeting this evening. And, uh, so long ago. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I'll move that they be approved. Second. Okay. Motion and a second on favor. All right. All right. Those four nothing, Mr. Lauer. Uh, interest correspondence letter. Yes, um, we received notice from AT&T. Uh, AT&T is the uh, has the pole inside of um, Peterswood Park for uh, communications. When that was constructed, it was done so at the township's urging that there be space for an additional carrier. T-Mobile was interested in being on that that site. They have yet to contact us uh, with an application to co-locate. They would also have to engage the township uh, to negotiate a lease for that property, but so. okay. Appreciate that. Um, any questions or comments from the minutes of the board commission meetings? No. Uh, miscellaneous items, zoning, hearing, board report. Any updates? Uh, well, we have three zoning hearings coming up this coming Tuesday. Uh, one is a lot covered variance. Another one is a variance for a, uh, a corner lot that has two front yard setbacks. They're looking to make one of those setbacks a side setback. That's up in Westbury. And the third one is escaping me at the moment. But yeah, we have three variances. Okay. Like Thank you. Next item on the agenda, Mr. Lauer, court order. 
Oh, I, um, I think um, we Too received bad, notice. Mr. Curie's not here to hear this. Yeah, we received notice that uh, the uh, court has upheld the zoning hearing board's decision that the lot there at on, on Stonebrook uh, is not to be built upon. So, was that actually Abington there? What's that? Is it? I thought Stonebrook continued. No, you know what? This is off of Google Maps, and Google Maps is confused on Stonebrook. Well, it's in the order too. What's that? It's mentioned in the order as well, Abington. Really? Well, they've got it wrong then. And again, that with that that case dealt with the variance, didn't it? Yeah. I rest my case. Anyway, okay. um, any agenda items for the next meeting? I would like to bring up, I was at the Peter Township Soccer Complex. We've never been able to grow grass next to the turf fields up there. It's always dirt. So if we can look to maybe putting sod or planting grass, it's, it's, it's dangerous. I mean, there's mud, then it creates ditches. So something needs to do. Okay, let me, let me have them take a look at that. Um, any other next agenda items? We heard any, any update on the uh, cell tower and Stonehenge? Um, where it is uh, is uh, sitting between the property owner and Diamond Communications, and uh, I think it's getting down to um, how much that's worth. All right, do. so we've done all we can. In other words, what we, we yes, okay. we're, right. we're done. Okay, okay. motion for adjournment. So, 